my calling to the Dominican order. It seemed as if a light came in the darkness. And I think to myself, this is really for me. I didn't even actually grow up Catholic. Uh, I grew up um, as a Presbyterian Christian. I look at my life and I think to myself, this is really for me the only life worth living. I come from a, a family that's very, has a lot of experience in science. My father's a biomedical engineer. Um, well, when I was 14, I'd had a dream for several years of joining the Air Force and going into aeronautical engineering. I actually wanted to be a, a, pro, a professional golfer, uh, of all things. When I first felt the call to come to DSPT, I remember that um, it was over a year ago, I was praying in chapel one evening and asking God for his guidance. My calling to the Dominican order and to, to come here and study at the Dominican School of Philosophy and Theology, interestingly, it comes, comes through oceanography. As I was reading into Catholic writers, I, I was really caught and engaged by the way that um, Catholic theologians and thinkers could make the faith coherent in, 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 a, in a reasonable way that still left a lot of room for mystery. When I was about 16, I started taking my first philosophy courses, and I thought, this is so much fun, but I really want to do something that's meaningful. I actually worked on a research submarine, the submarine Alvin for Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, and we dove down 10,000 feet to the hydrothermal vents and saw this alien world at the seafloor. And in the midst of that, I tried to explain how we could say, talk about these alien places and talk about how this gives glory to God. If, if you want to go to a moment, I suppose you could um, point to one morning I was in Mass uh, with a Catholic friend of mine who had taken me there. And uh, uh, everybody was kneeling at the moment of the consecration. And I remember just very vividly and very distinctly, it was really a moment of grace because Everybody was just silent before the, the priest who was raising the host. I mean, it was a fairly big-sized church, so there were a lot of people, but it was just complete silence, and the priest was raising the host above, above the altar. And, and I, I said to myself, you know, I don't, I don't believe what the Catholic Church teaches right now about the Eucharist, because I knew kind of what the teaching was. But if the Catholic Church is right, that that right there is the body and blood of Christ, um, then this is the most amazing and beautiful and astounding thing I've ever seen. I had the experience that no matter what may come, this is what I am doing with my life. Uh, any period of discernment was over. I had switched from the chapter on discernment to the chapter on commitment, as it were, and I knew that no, no matter what, no matter what might come, uh, this is my vocation, and, and I'm going to make it work. You know, with God's mercy, as we say. I had um, met Father Sweeney previously through a mutual friend, and um, once I was put into contact with him, everything began to fall into place. Uh, doors started to open that should not have opened for me, really almost miraculously. And it just seemed that uh, Christ was blessing that call to come here. So a, a large part of my vocation story, I think, has been the desire to help others. And that's rooted in my experience with my own family. I come from a very large family, and I do like to acknowledge uh, that they are probably the greatest, at least among the greatest influences in, in my own life and my acceptance of my vocation to religious life and priesthood. I began to understand that not everybody came from such a great, loving, supporting family, and not everybody had that kind of relationship, you know, with mom and dad or with their brothers and sisters. And uh, so they were looking elsewhere. And it, it then occurred to me, well, this is a great blessing, isn't it? This isn't just the way every family operates. This is something that, that God has given to me. And an urge to then somehow take that experience of love and share it with others. Um, I found DSPT online just looking for philosophical theology. Um, that's not a common program offered anywhere in the U.S. 
Eventually I entered the order and, and now I've come and started the school of philosophy and theology. And I remember one night working on a paper in, in philosophy. About 10 o'clock at night finishing up my paper and all of a sudden it hit me. I was like, this is what I've been trying to say. This is how you talk about science and still leave, leave room for God, still be able to explain about God, to know the, the real causes of things, all the causes of them. I find myself constantly engaged in my studies, whether I'm here or at home or at prayer. They become part of the prayer. People do have a hunger to share, and I suspect very few forums in which to do it. And so people will come to the church, uh, come to the ministers of the church, because they have something to say and there's no one else to whom they can say it, and it needs to be heard. I could take the words, say, from, from St. Paul in, in 1 Corinthians, he famously says, woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. The Dominican School of Philosophy and Theology has been uh, a very powerful influence, as you can imagine, uh, in the story of my own vocation and how I've come to understand my vocation and uh, my own mission and role in the church. I had the experience that no matter what may come, this is what I am doing with my life. 